Welcome back guys, in this tutorial we're working with a really warm edit with a little bit of contrast so it's going to be a little bit faded I'll get straight over to showing you guys her Instagram so if we come over here, if we come down and all of your links will be down in the description guys so just go down there and you'll be able to give her a follow down there if you like her work so if we come down you can see there's just so much warmth throughout the entire image so up in the sky you can see those blues even those whites they're getting pretty warm and then obviously in the shadows as well so overall just a really warm image and then um, another one that will show a lot of flatness to the image and um, not too much contrast so that's what we're going to be trying to achieve in this shot mainly so if we come down this is the one we're going to be working with trying to recreate those really warm greens slightly warm whites and then overall really warm image and for the shot here um, I've got the settings for it right down here so 18 millimeters nice and wide wide enough to get the front of the pool and up into the sky there ISO 200 so it's a bright day it's not really at sunset it's in the middle of the day no need for any high ISO uh, if 3.5 so the focal point is up the front here on the subject and then you get a little bit just a subtle amount of de depth of field um, in the background and if you wanted all these trees nice and sharp you'd have to be shooting up around f13 or so or f7 at the lowest if you wanted a sharp background but we get this nice soft background in this image by shooting at 3.5 and putting the focal point up the front here and then shutter speed 2000 so uh, it's a bright sunny day we need to keep that shutter speed really quick so we can expose the image co correctly okay so she sent this image in to me guys let's get into this one here's our raw unedited image and the edited one a screenshot from her instagram so we'll get straight into it i'll just show you the cropping so as you can see we've cropped in a bit there four by five and just centered it a little coming back let's go back to this right so let's bring up the exposure obviously and so we want to bring up the shadows we want to make this image nice and bright so let's really bring up those shadows and then we want this image to have quite a bit of a pop you can see it's really flat at the moment so what might help give that little bit of pop is bringing up the whites and we'll just do these roughly and then we'll touch them up a bit okay and I want to bring down the highlights so um, first I'll bring up the contrast actually um, and then I'll bring up the blacks so the blacks will also take out a lot of that contrast and it will brighten the shadowy areas as well so I want to brighten the shadowy areas we can't do that anymore because we've brought it so far up and I'll brighten the blacks at the same time so it will have a really big effect on the lower half of the image so now we've got it nice and bright and I need contrast up a bit because if I left con contrast down we just look a little too flat but doing it this way I was able to um, really brighten to get that uh, right vibe to the image and okay I'm just gonna drop the highlights as well so one thing with the highlights if I see the clouds um, I straight away go for the highlights as highlights is really gonna affect how much detail you see in those clouds and I always just try to line it up I'm gonna drop it for now and just try to match up the amount of detail so like um, just the little little details the bumps and all that can I see that over in this image and then sliding it back and forth you just sort of match it up with the other one and I'm gonna give it a bit extra reveal a bit extra detail because I know I want to put in 
just a tiny bit of a fade to those highlights and that's also going to affect the detail a fade with the curve here i mean so i'll try to explain a bit more about that later um right so obviously this image is really warm we'll bump up the warmth right now and that should get us a lot closer than what we are in terms of color so much warmer um so we've made a big change already before and after um right so texture and clarity this image looks really uh soft so a, a giveaway for texture this texture thing is new i haven't had much practice with it yet but it seems pretty close to clarity so what i think gives away the use of clarity is if you look at things like these ripples in the pool they will be really affected by clarity uh clouds uh, very obvious to see if clarity has been increased or decreased and texture sort of does the same but doesn't enhance the brightness and contrast so what I'm going to do I think our water looks much smoother if you look at this area here um, we'll zoom in I think over in her image it's quite subtle it's quite hard to see uh, especially in the brighter areas we can see more detail in our one. I'm going to drop it. And it's going to give that hazy look. Just very slightly. And I'm going to drop texture as well. So matching up the texture of the clouds. That's a very good thing to look at. And even these palm leaves is a really good thing to look at to try to figure out how much clarity is there. So high amount of clarity, you can really see it at the edges. Get that little bit of haze to the edges of everything. Okay, I think that looks closest to her image. Quite soft around the edges of those palm trees. Right. Um, let's keep going. Just highlights a bit more. Okay. Right. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of a fade um, using this curve we've, we've pretty much got a contrast right completely in this I'll just do a little bit in this I'll just I'll explain after I do it Okay, so that's all I'm going to do in the curves right now. And I'll just show you, the main thing I did here was just drop this white point a bit. So you can see that gives a really strong fade to those uh, brighter areas. So I also added in these points because that anchors here. Because if I brought this down, the curve would be down here. So these points will anchor that and then we can only affect the brighter areas. So I brought that down because you can see there's a layer of flatness, especially in those really bright areas. So if you look over here, if we just turn it off, it's very subtle, but you can sort of see, um, it sort of gets rid of a detail in those really bright areas. So if I bring, bring it down to um, just make an over-exaggerated over -exaggerated example, you can see how the detail in those bright areas is gone but then if you bring it back up there's detail back in there and I think there's just a little bit in the really brightest areas that has been taken down and given a slightly flatter look on, on top of already a flat look so I think that comes down a bit and these points are pretty much just to anchor it and then just a little lift to the blacks so you can't really notice it at all in this image if um, there's more shadows and blacks in this image you'd probably notice it but we'll just bring it up a touch so we don't so it softens up that contrast and um, adds a little bit of a fade to those darker areas okay um, let's we're pretty good with our contrast now we sort of just need to work on colors so what I'll do I'm just gonna shift the green primary this way just warm up those greens I'll just go about there 
Um, yeah, I'll just go with that. And split turning. So split turning is really important. And the first thing I'll do is I can see up in the sky here, I want a lot more warmth. You can just see in our image, the whites are white, if not a little blue. And over here, they are definitely warmer. And pretty much the entire image is warmer. So even in the in the uh, shadows here we've got warm colors so in the highlights I'm gonna put a nice orange or yellow and I'm gonna put quite a bit in there and I want to do this before HSL because as you can see this affects all the colors in your image and then you'll just use that to fine-tune the image uh, okay, shadows, I'm going to put a lot less. Just there, just a little bit, because it is throughout the entire image. Okay, um, we'll just whack in a bit of grain. There's not much, it's pretty hard to see, but we'll just chuck in about that much. Okay, before we go any further, I want to brighten this image a bit more, especially the lower half of the image. So I've got some filters, I've already placed them, and I'll just show you guys. Okay, so we'll start with this one up here. So this is affecting the entire bottom of the image. So if we look at our original, you can see there's a lot of shadow in the bottom half, and we want a really nice, bright, vibrant feel to the image so we are going to lift the shadows all the way up and then I've got another one down here which is also just affecting the bottom and I might just bring up the exposure for that okay and over on the left side here so we're nice, pretty bright over here. I still need to do a few things with the luminance, but I think over this side is extra dark and we need to brighten that. So I've placed a filter here and I just want to enhance the exposure. Okay. I think that looks good. Let's move on. Okay, so... A tricky thing here when dealing with the exposures up here is say our pool at the moment looks much brighter so we need to say bring up the whites or something like that but what what's actually happening is there's an increase in luminance of these colors so there's some colors that have only been brightened using this and not because you lifted the whites up top so you need to look out for that what i'll do is just bring up the obvious ones so let's go see aquas we'll really brighten this let's go with that as you can see it looks much more similar now um let's go Let's lift up these greens to give that nice shine. And then yellows very, very often comes up because as you can see, the yellows are affecting the edges of everything and it creates a very vibrant pop when you uh, bring up the luminance of the yellows. Okay. Right. Let's deal with saturation. I'll just bring up vibrance a lot. Because this is a vibrant look, I want to bring up the vibrance. Vibrance pretty much just brings up saturation of like the mid-tones and the, and the highlights, which gives a vibrant pop to the image. And I'll just drop saturation down here. Um, okay, I probably dropped saturation too far down on all of those. Just bring it up about 
idea and I'll drop the let's try running with that I'll just come back down and tweak the uh, saturation for a few of these colors um, reds can probably come up not many just the skin tones there um, I know I'm gonna come in with a brush later so I'm not too worried about that oranges affecting quite a bit of the image let's just drop it about there yellows um, just trying to match it up simply And it can be quite difficult to notice the difference between yellows and greens because they affect the same area so you just gotta try your best to see where the greens so say uh, um, so yellows are sort of affecting the edges more the greens are sort of just further in there I think greens are pretty saturated And we'll bring down the yellows because we've added so much warmth into the image like we've added it in down here with highlights and in bringing up the temperature if we also keep our yellows saturated up here in the saturation slider here they're going to be really really yellow because we've added all that yellow on top all that warmth on top so these need to be down and then greens can stay up um, aquas can come up a bit, so it's the pool there. Blues. So blues, it's also very hard to see the difference between aquas and blues sometimes, but in this image you can see um, the blues is affecting the sky and the pool, where aquas are just affecting the pool even though they affect the same areas of the pool pretty much so um, so I've noticed now by doing this this area of the pool is only affected by the aquas and then if I play with the aquas okay so that's pretty much affecting the whole pool but especially this area so I need to focus when choosing the saturation of the aquas focus on this spot and when we do the hues, I'm going to focus on that spot. Okay, um, saturation. So let's choose these colors correctly. So as you can see, we need way more oranges, especially up here. So yellows, for example. Let's move them way more closer to an orange. And then greens, we don't have many greens left in there. Like we look pretty much all orange up there. So I'm going to shift greens closer to a green or a blue. Because again, we added in so much warmth to the image. Our greens are going uh, very, very warm. So we need to cool them off compared to the rest of the image. Right, um, reds, uh, hard to tell, just skin tone, maybe a little towards orange. I'm gonna come in for a brush to broaden our subject soon. Um, okay, getting the right tones for the pool here. So, let's, I think we need, so if you look over here, I think we look a lot teal. We need a deeper blue over here. Um, or closer to a purple if you want to call it that just slightly aquas um, definitely want a nice green um, right okay and so purples is our last one let's see where that's affecting, so the only thing it's affecting is this this thing here and this thing here if you watch, changes and then over in her image you can see it's very very blue so 
the only way we get it that blue is shifting it all the way to the left and then saturation for that yeah looks about right okay and it was slightly affecting the sky as well but that also works out um, okay we are looking pretty good sharpening can stay default if not we could bring it down as it's a pretty smooth image maybe just leave it default um, I know we haven't enabled profile corrections because if I do this um, so this, here's the reference image over here this image where I've got my mouse is actually over here um, so if I click here now we have it over here if I go back to the image we're working on now I have that image there but if I enable profile corrections you can see um, the change in distortion so that's how I know uh, she hasn't enabled profile corrections uh, right let's keep going let's um, I've done that sharpening I might reduce the sharpening right there's one other thing I want to do is especially up here in the clouds actually I'll do I've got another filter here I just need to bring up the saturation of our sky a bit so bring it up okay I think that looks a little better um, right what was I gonna do I was gonna do one more thing so we if we look at our whites we've got a good amount of warmth to pretty much our whole image but the brightest areas especially the whites you can see we're white in our image but there's a hint of yellow in her uh, over in this one and I want to get that in this image you can also see it here there's just a bit more yellow a bit more warmth to those brighter areas and split toning's helpful but we've already done a lot of that and as as you can see you've got your image split in two so shadows and highlights we only want to affect the whites pretty much we don't want to affect the highlights we just want to affect the white so i'm going to add in a little bit of warmth using um this blue curve here so what i'll do i'll just do a little bit of work in this curve and i'll explain what i did okay so I'm done with this curve and so what I did is just added in a little bit of warmth especially with this point here so subtle but maybe you can see what it's doing so our whites are very very white there we just want a little bit of warmth in them so we brought it down a touch and then these points are pretty much just to anchor it down because if I didn't have them this line would slightly dip down below and we didn't want that we only wanted to affect the highlights or the or the whites up there so that's what we did and i can see it now especially this is another uh white area i can see there's been a bit more so if i just get rid of it maybe you can see the before and after it's, it's pretty subtle but i think it sort of ties um the image together a wee bit um right just check my saturations I think we are good there right um now we want it to make our subject pop so i've got a filter or a brush selected if i just tick this box you can see that we have it completely selected so all you do is just brush over and then you hit erase zoom in and then just get rid of the bits that you went over the edges and you'll very quick, quickly end up with something like that so once you've got that these are the sort of things I want to do I want to so obviously let's bring up the exposure and this is just to make a subject pop from the rest of the image so I'll bring it up a lot and then when you bring up exposure since you're bringing up everything you're bringing up the blacks you're bringing up the 
the shadows, you bring up the highlights, bring up the whites. You want to increase the contrast as well because otherwise you end up with a bit of a flat image. So it's going to take those black points down again and then you'll probably increase those highlights in that again as well. But I'm going to bring that up quite a bit. Um, and then we can work with saturation. We might look a little too saturated. Bring that down. And then sharpening so we get a bit of a more of a pop. And then if you know how to work with uh, white balance and that, this is you could mess around and get the skin tone you want. So we could go a bit closer to a yellow, which gives a bit more of... So if you want to get away from red, go this way. Go about there. Um, I wanted to pop a bit more maybe up these whites. That hat is maybe getting a little too bright, but oh well. Now maybe erase and just lightly go over the edge. It just looks a little harsh and fake. I'd do a better job of it if it was an actual edit. I think you guys get the point. Um, yeah, I might leave it there for that. Um, did we brighten this area? This area maybe even still looks a little too dark. Oh, we did bring up the exposure. Make sure it's inverted so tick this box to affect inside of the circle and yeah that's about it I think I'll leave it there um, the only thing I didn't really feel like I got in this image was the sky Our sky looks a little purple but we did match up the colors in the um, pool correctly or they look pretty darn close so and then the sky is a little off so maybe Maybe she selected it, maybe she put a filter there, maybe she did different work and she most likely did curves. Everyone, everyone I'm doing tutorials on most likely did some curves in the red, green and blue channels. Have some S curves in there, but I just sort of show you guys how to get this image. And I don't want to go too much into curves because it is confusing and yeah, I think we got it got there with a minimal amount of work in the curves. Um Okay, yep, I think I'll just leave it there and then obviously there's been some Photoshop done or so this pole here you can see it's not in this image here so maybe just use this, maybe just use this or you're better off taking it into uh, taking it into Photoshop and using the clone stamp tool but I won't go into that, I've gone into it in other videos but this one I won't and then you can see there's just this line going across here, a closed line, I don't know what it is, but I've tried, uh, she's tried to remove it in hers. But otherwise, that, that's about it, guys. Um, maybe a little bit of brightness to the image. I, I don't know. I might just leave it there. Um, maybe just play around with some exposures. Maybe take the contrast down a touch. whites just a touch of, of a bright brighter look and um, yeah otherwise i'm pretty happy with that one guys before after um yeah i'll just leave it there guys i'll put all of your links down in the description she's got really awesome work actually i will show you guys this uh edit on another image so if I just right click, uh, settings, copy settings, everything pretty much, white balance if you want, uh, graduated fiddles no, brush no, something's cut off from the recording but just copy and if I go over to an image, 
you can see how we can get this style on another image. So this one, I'll just, so if this was a preset, which I'm, I don't know, could make it into, okay. Uh, it looks a little too green, a little too, just so we need to get our exposure right. Bring it down, looks a little too dark, bring it back up. Um, let's maybe bring up the warmth. Okay, um, so it looks a little too green. It's kind of a yucky green. So let's shift uh, this towards purple. Bit warmer. Okay, um, so we look a little too flat. So what I mean is those blacks aren't dark enough and those highlights aren't bright enough. Bring up contrast. And yeah, uh, you can see we get those really nice greens. They're, I don't know what color you call them. They're very warm and uh, really nice greens. And then what I'd maybe do, so you can see uh, this, this curve in play, it's just making those whites a little warm. I'd probably add in even more warmth. But then we go a little bit green, shift the purple across a little, take the uh, saturation down. Um, maybe a little bit of fade to the blacks. And yeah, I really like that before and after. So we really brought up the shadows to give the vibrant look. So bang. Yeah, I'm not gonna spend long on this, but you can sort of see how that already translates over to another image really well. And if it was a preset, it would do very well. Um, yeah, uh, I'll leave it there guys. If we just go back to our other image. So, as I said, uh, I'll be putting all the links down in the description. She has some really nice work. Hopefully I'll do another image on her style. But go give her a follow down in the description, guys. He's a before, after, really awesome, unique style, guys. Go let her know uh, that you found her in my videos. I might just drop the blacks for a bit more contrast in that in our subject there whites, saturation, touch more redness by adding purple in, bit less, um, uh, we'll leave it there, yeah, okay guys, check out all her stuff down in the description, check out my stuff, uh, the presets or if you guys are really liking these tutorials you can check them out uh, heaps of awesome feedback there and I do uh, offer you guys to download raw um, professional photos that you guys can edit yourself uh, if you want to edit photos with a Canon 1DX Mark II uh, and L series lenses so you can work with those professional photos and perfect your editing before you invest in expensive equipment you can head over to my website and download those um, high quality photos there's also a lot of other stuff over there but yeah definitely go give her a follow guys let her know that you found her in this video and yeah i will catch you guys in the next one thanks for watching